Each day, around 150,000 people die. Imagine that 150,000 human beings, every single day, they die. Today, tomorrow, the day after tomorrow, in weekends and so forth, doesn't matter. Out of this, 100,000 people die because of aging. We got quite good at keeping people alive and now they die because they get too old, like a machinery. You know, you get older and older and something will break inside and you'll die. A hundred years ago, two thirds of all deaths, two thirds, were caused mainly by three problems, uh, diarrhea, pneumonia and tuberculosis. These are diseases that we can treat today. So basically no one is scared today that they will die from those diseases, but imagine 100 years ago, up or up until 100 years ago, uh, you would be scared thinking that two thirds of all human beings die of those diseases. But today is no problem. We're not scared of those ones. So it's the same two thirds, two thirds dying 100 years ago from those diseases and today from aging. So how about we see aging as a disease? Actually, what happens today is that uh, more and more doctors are understanding that aging is maybe a sort of disease. It's a problem one that we have to fix. I am a molecular biologist. Am I interested in understanding the origin of diseases in order to be able to have effective treatments? So one of the things we, we have learned uh, from, for instance, infectious diseases is that the only way to eradicate them or to treat them effectively is to understand the origin. In the case of infectious diseases, it will be a bacteria or a virus, and that's how we have eradicated smallpox from the earth, or how we have succeeded in controlling HIV, a, le a lethal disease when it appears, and now it's a chronic disease. So uh, infectious diseases uh, are not a problem for scientists because we know what to do. But there are other diseases, uh, like the ones that are killing us uh, today and we don't know how to treat effectively. Diseases like cancer, cardiovascular, neurodegenerative diseases. And uh, we know that they have actually a common cause. And this common cause is the process of aging, of molecular and cellular aging. There are some creatures that do not seem to get old and they discovered a lot more and they realized that aging is basically accumulated damage to the cells. Uh, because if you think about uh, cardiovascular disease, cancer, strokes, and so many other diseases are very likely caused by aging. So if you fix aging, you will fix those other diseases. Uh, why is this analogy very important? Because maybe we should think the same about our society. Instead of us trying to fix cancer and cardiovascular disease and, and Alzheimer's, no, meaning to fix corruption and to fix pollution and to fix climate change and to fix waste. What if we look at what creates those in the first place? Same way that aging creates these diseases that kill most of the people. Trade, I will, I will say, creates these problems, most of the problems that you see in the world today. Not all, but most and the most damaging ones. There are three main things to get out of this analogy with aging. First, nothing is normal. It was not normal to get into a metal box and just speed up with like 100 kilometers per hour, 200 kilometers per hour. 200 years ago, people would have thought, you are crazy, you are nuts, this is just impossible. Or get into a metal box and fucking fly. They would think you are crazy. So we may think that, oh, it's normal for people to, to get old. Well, maybe it's not normal. It was normal hundreds of years ago to die from pneumonia or tuberculosis. Not normal anymore. Well, same with aging, for example. People think it's so normal, we have to just accept that aging is part of life. But of course, if you are a smart human species, you don't stop there. You don't just say these things are normal. We, we want to investigate and we should investigate. And that's one thing that I love about our species. I still love it. It's, it's a little bit of hope there that you investigate things. Humans may investigate things. And, and for example, aging may be under control. We, we may fix aging eventually. Death. It's a frightening thought. 
It's something I don't want to, to happen. Much as I think our life in this world is often a pretty messy affair, I still would like to hang around. So nothing is normal. So in the same way, trade shouldn't be normal. Yes, we traded for thousands of years, but how about we don't? How about we stop doing that? How about we, we find a different way? Who owns the patent on this vaccine? Well, the, the people, I, I would say, there is no patent. This is, could you patent the sun? <laughs> Societies will change. It's not like human species was born into this kind of society and we, they traded they, they, since the moment they came to work, they start to trade shit. You know, no, that's not the case and it will never be the case. Things will change all the time. Second thing to understand is that focusing on symptoms will never fix them. You should focus on the problem that creates those symptoms. Third thing. Things are complicated. Aging is complicated. If you want to know what creates aging, you should look at metabolism. What is metabolism? Well, oh my God. Metabolism is pretty much all of the functions that the cell performs, you know, the, the, the things that interact with, the, the accumulation of, of materials and production of energy and so forth. You cannot tweak metabolism, this has too many parts. You cannot just go into the human body and tweak it in a way that everything that we interact with, from the oxygen that we breathe to the food that we eat, uh, to control all of that is way, way, way too complex. So their approach is to identify the major causes of damage. So damage, basically, the junk, the junk that accumulates inside cells. To take the junk out of the human body so that the human body doesn't age, that's one approach, for example. Uh, my point here is that we have a complex problem, but we, maybe we don't have to go into this complexity of the problem. But look at, you know, what influences mostly this complexity. In the same way, Society is a very complex monster. I think it's even more complex than metabolism. Why is it that every human being in every society has a knowledge of right and wrong? They have a moral compass. Where did that come from? You either be gay or you be Muslim. So you told me this morning, when I was in here talking to you, that you would drink this water, right? So, would you drink it? Yes or no? People have all kinds of wishes and, and all kinds of needs, and there are people who are handicapped, you know, have all kinds of physical disabilities. There are people who want to climb the Mount Everest. There are people who want to be in all kinds of groups and watch all kinds of things and do all kinds of other activities. So I don't think we can organize and orchestrate the society and say this is how we should organize a society. I think we should have to get rid of that notion that we can somehow build a new society. So, in the same way that they approach aging in a scientific manner and say, we cannot tweak metabolism, but let's take away the junk that accumulates into cells. My proposal is, you look at the society. In a society, what do you see? Wherever there is trade, usually, mainly, mostly, you will see problems, lots of problems. Uh, how about you, you look at that as junk? That's junk, so let's get that away from the society. Let's get the junk away. And if you get that junk away, somehow, I think we have a good chance 
to create a much better society without us telling people what to do and to orchestrate their own lives. Let the society emerge because it's a very complex fucking thing. Of course, I'm not just saying, let's stop trading. Wherever you see trade, let's stop it. It's almost like saying, wherever you, you see junk into cells, let's kill those cells and let's kill the patient. And guess what? We got rid of aging, but we killed the patient. You know, not like that, of course, but to replace it, like in the same way that you replace some cells with newer cells, like with stem cells. I think we should do the same in our society. When you see some trade-based goods and services, for example, people have to pay currency or with their data for food and for accommodation and for safety and so forth. What if you create something that is trade-free? So you push, push it aside, push this junk of trade aside, you know, in a way attacking, attacking the society with solutions. Food is very simple because the mission is very clear. People are hungry, you cook and you feed them. And that's it, there's nothing else required. There's no more planning. We did what, what chefs do, which is we just started somewhere. We started small, getting requests for 100 meals here, 30 meals here, started building a team. We just scale up, we make sandwiches, we cook paella, we get another kitchen and we're making all types of Puerto Rican dishes. This is uh, how we're gonna be feeding roughly over half a million people a day. We're gonna be opening kitchens, Mayagüez, Aguadilla. We are gonna do one in Manatee. So you will manage to infiltrate this society and little by little create a society where trade is obsolete. That should be the goal here, to make trade obsolete because patching the society here and there, it's exactly like trying to keep old people alive and they are going to suffer and they are going to be crippled and they are going to not be able to do much or enjoy life.